Imagine standing on the rugged cliffs of Ireland, the wind whipping through your hair, whispering tales of ancient travellers who shaped the blood in your veins. Who were these people? Where did they come from? Scientists have been digging into the DNA of the Irish, and what they've found is a story wilder than any legend, a tale of wanderers, farmers, warriors and invaders, all leaving their mark on this emerald isle. It's not just a science lesson, it's a journey through time, piecing together the puzzle of who the Irish really are. So let's dive in, with the salty air in our lungs and curiosity lighting the way to uncover the true genetic origins of the Irish people. Picture this. It's over 10,000 years ago, and the last ice age has finally loosened its grip on Ireland. The land is raw, untouched, a blank canvas of green hills and rocky shores. The first people to step onto this stage are hunters, tough as the stone tools they carry. They've got dark skin and striking blue eyes, a look that might surprise you if you think of the Irish as all fair and freckled. These Mesolithic wanderers, maybe just a few thousand strong, roam the island, fishing rivers and chasing deer. They're small in number, but they're scrappy, connected enough to keep their families diverse. Scientists found traces of them at places like Mount Sandel, even a reindeer bone hinting at their ancient hunts. These are the first brushstrokes on Ireland's genetic canvas, faint but foundational. Fast forward a few thousand years to around 3800 BC, and the scene changes dramatically. New faces arrive, not hunters this time, but farmers with a whole new way of life. They've sailed from the sun-scorched lands of the Middle East, through Spain, bringing seeds and secrets of the soil. These Neolithic folks don't just wander, they settle, building tombs and planting roots. One woman, buried near Balinahati over 5,000 years ago, tells us what they looked like. Black hair, brown eyes, a farmer's grit in her bones. Their DNA shows their cousins to people from southern Europe, and they sweep across Ireland, mixing a little with those hunter-gatherers, but mostly taking over. It's a quiet revolution, one harvest at a time, and it changes the island forever. Now, let's jump to 2500 BC, when the air starts to hum with something new. Metal. Bronze Age travellers roll in from the vast steppes of Eastern Europe, a place called the Pontic Caspian Steppe. They're herders, bold and restless, with chariots and a knack for crafting shiny tools. Their blood carries something special, genes that let them drink milk as adults, blue eyes that catch the light, and a quirk called hemochromatosis that's still common in Ireland today. Scientists dug up bones on Rathlin Island, three men from this time, and found their DNA matches the modern Irish more than anyone expected. These steppe wanderers might have brought the first whispers of Celtic tongues, laying down a huge chunk of the genetic foundation we see now. It's like they poured a new layer of paint over the canvas, bold and lasting. But the story doesn't stop there. The Irish aren't just one people, they're a mix, a stew simmering over centuries. Around the 8th century, the Vikings crash in, all wild hair and wooden ships coming from Norway and Denmark. They don't just raid, they stay, marrying into families, especially up in Ulster. Their DNA leaves a mark, think of it as a splash of Scandinavian spice in the Irish pot. You can see it today in places where people have a bit more Norwegian in them, even tied to things like higher rates of multiple sclerosis in some spots. These sea wolves didn't just take, they gave, weaving their threads into the fabric of Ireland. Then come the Normans in the 12th century, swaggering in from France with their castles and chainmail. They're not a tidal wave, but they sprinkle their own flavour, French-like ancestry that pops up in the East especially. And later, the English and Scottish settlers arrive, planting roots during times like the plantations. They mix in too, especially in Ulster, where the lines between Irish and British blur a bit. It's messy, human, real. Not a clean Celtic tale, but a patchwork of people bumping into each other, fighting, loving, living. Scientists have a map now, thanks to something called the Irish DNA Atlas. They looked at folks whose grandparents all came from the same spots, 194 Irish souls, and compared them to thousands of British neighbours. What they found? Ten little clusters of Irish DNA, like neighbourhoods on a genetic street. Seven are pure Gaelic Irish, rooted deep in the West, while three show a shared dance with British ancestry, especially up north. 
There's a line, too, a genetic wall in Ulster, where Viking and British influences hit harder. It's not just history, it's geography written in our cells. Zoom out, and here's the big picture. The Irish genome settled into shape about 3,500 years ago, back in that Bronze Age boom. But it's been spiced up ever since. Vikings, Normans, settlers, all tossing in their ingredients. It's why the Irish aren't just Celtic in some pure, mythical way. That word's more about language and culture than a single bloodline. The real story is wilder. Hunter-gatherers with blue eyes, farmers from the Middle East, herders from the steppe, sea raiders and knights all crashing together over millennia. And it's not just a cool tale, it matters today. Those ancient genes carry quirks, like why some Irish folks are more prone to cystic fibrosis or coliac disease. It's a map for doctors, a clue to keeping people healthy. But more than that, it's a mirror. Next time you're at a pub, laughing with friends or staring out at the sea, think about it. Your blood's a storybook, pages written by wanderers who didn't even know they were building you. From dark-skinned hunters to Viking sailors, they're all there, in every freckle, every heartbeat. So, what's the hook? It's this. The Irish aren't just from Ireland. They're from everywhere. Middle East, Eastern Europe, Scandinavia, France, Britain, stitched together by time and tide. It has a tale that starts with a single step onto a cold shore and ends with the people who carry the world in their veins. Scientists keep digging, finding more bones, more secrets, but the heart of it is simple. The Irish are a living echo of human history, messy and beautiful. Next time you raise a glass, toast to that, to the hunters, the farmers, the warriors and the wanderers who made you, one wild step at a time. Let's linger on that cliff a bit longer, feeling the weight of it all. Those Mesolithic hunters didn't know their blue eyes would stick around, faint but fierce. Those Neolithic farmers couldn't guess their wheat fields would feed a new nation. The Bronze Age herders, banging out their first bronze axe, had no clue they'd anchor a whole people's DNA. And the Vikings, rowing in under stormy skies, didn't plan to leave their mark in Ulster's blood. Yet here we are carrying them all. It's not just science, it's a family reunion, stretched across 10,000 years, every one of us a chapter in a book that's still being written. Think about the Ballinahatty woman, her hands rough from digging, her dark hair catching the wind. Or those Rathlin men, their bones whispering of milk and metal. They're not just data points, they're people, like us, with dreams and fears, shaping a future they'd never see. The Vikings, too, shouting over the waves, and the Normans clanking through the mud. They're not invaders in some cold textbook. They're kin, messy and loud, crashing into the family tree. Even the settlers, planting their flags and their farms, they're part of this unruly clan. And the land itself, it's a witness. Those cliffs, those hills, they've seen it all, soaking up the footsteps of every wave of newcomers. Ireland's not just a place. It's a crucible, melting down all these lives into something new. That's what the DNA says, not a straight line, but a spiral, twisting back through time, pulling in threads from every corner of the earth. It's why the Irish can look at a stranger and see a cousin, why the past feels so close you can almost touch it. So, as the sun dips low over the sea, painting the sky with fire, let's hold on to this. The Irish are a people born of movement, of courage of collision. From the first hunter's arrow to the last settler's plough, it's a story of survival, of blending, of becoming. Scientists can map the genes, but the soul of it, that's in the laughter, the songs, the stubborn spirit that says, we're here and we're us. That's the true origin of the Irish, not just in the blood, but in the beating heart of a people who carry the whole world with them, one step, one story, one life at a time.